Scrap wood challenge, scrap wood challenge. It's crap, it's crap, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. In this project, I'm going to make four wooden hinge boxes. Each one will have a different style of hinge. So hopefully there's one in there that you like and you think about having a go at yourself. I've never made wooden hinges before, except for my folding desk, which did have a hinge of sorts. But anyway, this should be a fun project. I split the video into two parts as it was getting quite long. In this part, I'll prepare the boxes and finish two of them, complete with the hinges. And then in part two, I'll finish the other two boxes. I'm using my usual camphor laurel as it's a scrap wood challenge and also to add some contrast and vary the boxes, I'm using some reclaimed brush box flooring. I'll quickly show some preparation of the stock and then get into making the boxes. The camphor laurel looks great, but it's difficult to get a good finish with its interlock grain running in different directions. I've tried using a high angle plane, and while that works better than a regular plane, I still get some tear out, so I'm going to rely on sanding the pieces smooth. That's the pieces cut to length for all four boxes. Now onto the joints. And for that, I'm using box joints and using my John Highs box joint jig. I'm spacing the fingers differently to a usual box joint just to make them a little more interesting. To avoid making mistakes, I've marked the back of the jig so I know exactly where to make each cut. You may have noticed I've left extra on the end of the joints. Some pieces will need that, but most don't. So I'll trim those down next on the table saw. Next I'll cut a groove for the bottom of the box to fit into. I'm using a router so I can stop the groove before the ends of the workpiece. To work out the dimensions of the bottom pieces, I'm taping two sticks together, then taking a measurement off those. I'm leaving them a touch short to allow for any expansion.
The bottoms get a rebate and the lip that's left is what fits into the grooves on the box. Making it this way, the bottom sticks out slightly and elevates the box off the surface that it's sitting on. Now I'll glue the first one together and then get on to making a hinge. Before I do glue it together, I'll sand all the inside faces of the box first. I'm cutting the top piece to length and leaving a bit extra on and also cutting a second piece for the hinge. The two pieces will be finger jointed so they can interlock and form a hinge. It would be very difficult if not impossible to drill a hole all the way through that length for the hinge pin and do that accurately. So instead I'm going to cut a groove and I'm going to put one on the back of this piece here and then one along the edge of the top piece. The hinge pin can go in and then I'll glue a block in afterwards and that will hold it in place. I position the grooves like this as they'll be hidden when it all goes together. I'm using a 1 8 inch diameter brass rod. I've swapped the table saw blade for one that exactly matches it. It needs to be a good fit so there's no slop in the hinge. I cut these strips off camera and now gluing them in, making sure that they're pressed down against the rod again so there's a good fit and there's no slop there. I left it a couple of minutes, just enough time for the glue to take and then remove the rod and use that to glue in the other one. Now I'm back to the box joint jig and making fingers for the hinges. I'm making new marks for where I need to cut. I'll cut on the orange marks on one piece and the black marks on the other. I'm spacing them out again to what I think will look pleasing, but that could be done with the same regular finger joints. And if you don't have a dado stack, you could do this on a router table. The dado stack does leave a few marks so I'm using a chisel to tidy them up a bit. The ends need to be rounded over and you'll need the correct radius bit for the thickness of wood you're working with. I'm using a 6mm round over bit and the top is 12mm thick. 
The back piece only needs rounding over on one edge, but the top needs rounding over on both edges. There's not quite enough clearance as that round over isn't perfectly round, so I'll carefully sand it a touch more. That's getting close, so next I'll cut a recess for the handle to fit into.
I spent a fair bit of time going backwards and forwards, sanding both the lead and the recess to get a really nice fit. I could have cut the fingers directly on the back piece of the box, but I reckon this way will look much better. I'm excited to announce that starting on September the 26th with a Master of Architecture degree from Harvard University, Frank Howarth from the Makers Mob will be launching a new woodworking design series. In this four-week series, Frank will cover everything that you need to know to understand the fundamentals of woodworking design. Along with this series, you'll also get access to my woodworking tutorials and also projects from YouTube's top makers like the Samurai Carpenter, Jimmy Duresta, Liam Hoffman and John Peters, who now all have projects live inside the Makers Mob. The doors for this event will close on September the 25th at midnight, so click the link in the description below to register and I'll see you there on the inside. Even though I didn't show it, I did do some hand sanding as well. Um, for the finish, I'm using a hard wax oil from Whittle Waxes. It's a matte finish and I'm only showing one coat, but after leaving it overnight, I gave it a light sand and applied another coat. Now on to the next box, I've already glued it together and next I'll fit the lid. This hinge is just a simple dowel that pivots, very easy to do and I reckon it will look great too. I'm going to leave a tab on the lid for a handle again, but this time I'm not rounding the internal corners and I'm going to keep it square just to see how that looks. Now I'm marking the dowel position for the hinge. The radius of the rounded end is 6mm as the thickness of the top is 12mm so I mark in 6mm from the edge. I put some packers in the box for the lid to sit at exactly the correct height and then I transferred those marks onto the box.
because the dowel will be exposed, I'm making them from brush box to match the sides of the box. I won't use too much glue, but just in case any squeezes out, I'm putting a small amount of wax around the hinge area just so the glue can't stick the joint together. I use the same hard wax oil again for the finish and I'm really enjoying using it. It looks fantastic, it feels great to touch when it's dry and it's super easy to apply. And by the way, if you're wondering, I did coat the bottoms of the boxes too. I reckon they turned out great, they were heaps of fun to make and don't forget to check out the next video where I'll make the other two boxes. On one of them I'll be using a Rob Cosman style hidden hinge, they're very cool. I made this test piece just to try it out and if you look when it's closed you can barely see where the hinge is. Hopefully you enjoyed this video, if you did please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.